This is a uh, short video about manifold and spray systems. This is one of the Spraymation's many products that we've made for over 30 years. It basically is a stainless steel pipe manifold and a number of our electromagnetic uh, applicators connected to that manifold. Typically it's used with airless spray tips. Uh, it's used to make a continuous line of spray pattern for gluing things in continuous uh, paper converting applications. In most systems, there's the manifold pipe, and there are a number of the spray applicators connected to that pipe. with spray patterns coming out of each one to make up a continuous line as long as you need a spray pattern. If we look at these individual guns, if we say as a, as a typical uh, application that each gun puts out about one gram in approximately 10 milliseconds of on time, that's the flow rate of each gun. If we divide the one gram by the 10 milliseconds, we find out that the actual flow rate is one gram divided by 0.01 seconds, which equals um, 100 grams per second. Okay. If on our system here, there's, let's say there are 10 guns across a 10-foot uh, uh, web, that means there are 10 guns. So it is 10 times the individual gun flow rate, so it's 10 times 100 grams a second, which equals 1,000 grams a second. If we multiply this to get, uh, uh, convert it from grams per second uh, to grams per minute, we multiply this number by 60 to convert this, uh, uh, seconds to minutes. So it's also equal to 60,000 grams a minute. Um, which is about taking the density of the adhesive being about the same as water is about 60 liters a minute which is quite a bit uh, which is actually for, for us here it is 16 gallons a minute that's the instantaneous flow that this system needs when all 10 of these applicators dispense one gram in 10 milliseconds. We need to have a fluid dispensing system that can produce 16 gallons a minute of flow. The other side of the equation for a process like this is the average flow. So, we'll continue with our example of this. And let's say we have 20 logs per minute as our production rate. If each log has 10 guns and each gun dispenses one gram, each gun will be, it will be 20 times one gram which equals 20 grams, and then there are 10 guns, 10 guns times 20 grams equals 200 grams per minute. 
there is a significant difference between 200 grams a minute, the average flow, and 60,000 grams for the instantaneous flow. In a fluid system, the equivalent of capacitor is an accumulator. It's an energy storage device. There's several different designs. The type that we use in these adhesive systems is a bladder accumulator. There is a large, heavy steel vessel that is used to contain the pressure because this accumulator works at the flute full operating pressure of the glue system and the glue pump. So that might be 2,000 PSI, it might be 2,500 PSI. This is a heavy duty device. Inside the accumulator, there is a bladder. And it is a heavy, basically, balloon or bag. And it has a port coming out the top where this balloon can be charged with nitrogen gas. Under the balloon, there is a perforated support to keep the balloon from extruding out of the port in the bottom of the accumulator. Typically, the pressure inside the accumulator is set to about 50% of operating pressure. The accumulator is simply hooked in line at the end of the manifold with the T-fitting. So the, the glue coming in from the pumping system enters the accumulator, enters the manifold, and goes to the applicator heads. With the bladder filled to 50% pressure, until the pressure reaches 50%, the fluid pressure is less than the bladder, so nothing happens. Once the, the fluid pressure exceeds the pressure within the bladder, the bladder become, becomes compressed, its size reduces as the nitrogen in the bladder is compressed by the pressure, and the accumulator fills up with pressure. The pressurized bladder acts like a pneumatic spring. So you slowly compress the spring, but once you provide a path for the fluid to come back out of the accumulator, the full force of the spring is there available immediately to shove that fluid out as fast as possible. The, the accumulators that we normally use on a, on a fluid system are capable of storing about of adhesive. Typically it's a little less than that. It's probably more in the one cup, eight fluid ounces, a uh, quarter of a liter kind of amount of adhesive that actually gets stored in the accumulator. That quarter of a liter, 250 grams or so, is immediately available to the manifold because this T is directly at the end of the manifold. There's a minimal amount of piping between the manifold and the accumulator. When people talk about their, their manifold systems, they say, well, gee, these systems have been in the plant for 30 years often. They've worked well for years, and now suddenly they're having problems with them. There are two things that have changed in recent years with manifold systems. First, the viscosity of glue has tripled. The percent of solids in the glues have gone up to change the characteristics of the glue and the processes that you're using. The third thing is a lot of these processes have also changed and have longer on times. So is there a downside to adding an accumulator to the, uh, to the system to increase the instantaneous flow? Um, there are two concerns with it, with adding the accumulator to, to your system. One's already there, and it's already part of your problem. 
Out here somewhere, we have our pneumatic pump. And say typically it is a pump with a air motor ratio to fluid section ratio, say at 50 to 1. What that means is if you put one psi of air into the air motor section, the fluid section will return 50 psi of fluid. If we run this thing at what we would call the maximum pressure, we put 50 psi of air in and out of the pump, we would get 2,500 psi maximum. In most systems, there's either a piece of rigid pipe or a hose between the pump and the tail time manifold. In the past, these hoses were always half-inch inside diameter Teflon lined hoses. But the problem is that that hose was fine for the old lower viscosities, but it's no longer fine for the new higher viscosities. And what tends to happen is even if you have the accumulator, when these guns instantaneously fire, they have this massive instantaneous flow that we just discussed. There'll be a very large pressure drop across this hose, and there'll even be some pressure drop across the manifold. When you add the accumulator, the pump gets to pump material into the accumulator, into the system, over the entire time between logs. So you have a, a large window to recharge the accumulator and get everything back up to operation pressure. Without the accumulator, um, you have that instantaneous flow and you get massive pressure drops. The way these pumps work is this ratio is all this pump cares about. If this pressure, because I have a valve open, goes below 2,500 pounds, the pump moves and pumps material. If I have a pressure drop across this hose of, say, 500 PSI, that 500 PSI comes off here, and if this pressure right here is 2,000 PSI, the 2,000 plus the 500 has satisfied this the pump's requirements, and the pump stops moving, the pump stops um, supplying fluid. What actually happens, it's a little different. That this is probably 400, and the pump notices there's a little pressure difference, and pumps it at a slow rate, refilling it up. Today, what we recommend is changing this hose to at least 7 eighths inch ID. that will increase the inside uh, uh, cross-sectional area of the hose uh, by almost a factor of four. And the way fluid mechanics work, depending on your fluid, that will take your pressure drop and not just make it a quarter of what it was, but it'll make it about a sixteenth of what it was because there are uh, square factors within the flow equations. So if this pressure drop had been, say, 500 pounds, then all of a sudden we, with this uh, uh, change in the hose diameter, just doubling the hose diameter, um, we'll be taking that pressure drop probably down to about 40 or 50 pounds. And there's only 40 PSI here. The pump will be operating much longer to charge this thing up and have it ready for the next. This is already a problem in the system you have, but it's something you need to be corrected. If you want to convince yourself that this is actually a problem, and I highly recommend this for at least the first system, I would put a pressure gauge right here, and I would put a pressure gauge on the other side of, of this. And some people even want to have a pressure gauge way out here at the far end of the manifold. 
These would be like 3,000 psi liquid fill gauges. And you'll be able to see the, the pressure drops along the system. You'll be able to see the pressure drops when the guns fire instantaneously. In a system typically without an accumulator, if the system's been off and the first time the guns are fired, before the guns are fired, all three gauges will be exactly the same. When the guns are fired, these two will drop significantly. There'll be very little drop at this one. But after a few shots, you'll notice that all of them are lower than they were in the beginning. And there's a problem. When the accumulator's added, these problems will start going away. And you'll be able to measure this drop across the hoses again. The final concern about adding accumulators to the system is an accumulator is an energy storage device. Uh, part of a, a kind of energy that needs to be dealt with when you're doing a lockout situation, doing maintenance or whatever. If this accumulator stores about a pint of fluid, that fluid is at full pump pressure, say 2,500 PSI. If you want to do maintenance on this, you want to make sure that this manifold has been uh, relieved of pressure and the pump is locked out. <clears throat> the pump um, has a check valve in it. All pneumatic pumps have check valves in them. So you need another method for getting the fluid out of, uh, out of the system. On new spray systems, we provide a valve. And we call it a dump valve. And it just it's a, a valve is plumbed in right here. It's just a, a normally open valve. And it's pneumatically controlled. So we take the same 50 pound air pressure and use it to control this valve. When you turn on the air pressure to the pump, the normally open valve closes, closes off, so the pump will pump all its fluid through the hose, through the accumulator, to the manifold, and out the guns. When you disconnect the air pressure, that relieves the air pressure to the motor, and it also removes the air pressure from this valve. Then this valve returns to a normally open state, it discharges all the fluid out of the system, draining the accumulator, and taking all these things to zero pressure. This glue is clean glue. It can be stored in a container and reused. It can be directed back to the original glue container source. Uh, there are a number of possibilities of what can happen here. A lot of people also want to be absolutely uh, safety compliant. They also want to have uh, a ball valve out here that also does the same function that can be locked. That way you have true OSHA lockout capability. You also need lockout ability help here if you want to be fully OSHA compatible. Um, the newest pumping systems that we manufacture include the lockout here, the redundant valve here, the dump valve here, and are ready to go. I hope what I've explained here uh, helps you understand a little bit about accumulators, how the accumulator helps the flow, instantaneous average flows, and the problems with this hose here, or pipe, or whatever it is in the middle, which is a restricting factor, which is causing a lot of the problems in these fluid systems. Thank you.